Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about my Proxmox setup and what I currently have running on Proxmox. I'm sure a few of these things will surprise you and be quite a bit different from what other people you see on YouTube are using their Proxmox setup for. Before we get into that, I want to thank you for all the new subscribers. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, just a couple hundred more to go. I appreciate each and every one of you. I want to thank you for checking out my videos, leaving comments and likes. I really do appreciate it, and every little bit helps grow my channel more. Also motivates me to make more of these videos, so thanks again. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Like I said, I want to go over what's running on my Proxmox currently. If you're not familiar with Proxmox, it's a Type 1 hypervisor, which allows you to run VMs, and you can pass through hardware to those VMs. It's similar but different than, you know, running VirtualBox or a VMware Workstation or something like that to run your VMs like a lot of you are probably used to. The Proxmox uh, software runs directly on the hardware, so there's no, like, underlying Windows install, and then you're running software and Windows to get the VMs. The VMs are, are running directly on the hardware in a sense. So if you are if you want to learn how to set that up, I have videos about that on my channel, about how to set up Proxmox and things like that, starting from scratch. My Proxmox runs on a little bit older hardware, I guess you could say. Um, runs on a 7700K Intel Core i7 processor. And it's done fine uh, for the most part, but as you'll see in a minute as we get into it, they're... There are some limitations with what I can do, and I have to kind of pick and choose sometimes. Uh, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into what's actually on my Proxmox today. Now, I recently, about a month or so ago, I had torn down my whole Proxmox setup and then started from scratch. And with that, I had a new purpose in mind for what I was using Proxmox for at the time. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you may have, have caught me saying that, you know, in my professional career, I work a lot with Windows, Windows servers, uh, Intune, SCCM, things like that. So my current purpose for using Proxbox is kind of a lab environment for some of the things that I'm doing in my professional career. So before we jump into those specifics, uh, let's just go through each one of these things I have running. And each one of these that you see here is either a container or a full VM. So like uh, PyHole, this PyHolio, uh, that's, of course, the DNS uh, to be able to block ads and things like that. I have that running in a container. And the second one that says Marge, it is a Nabara vm that i was using gpu pass through for and it's currently not powered on due to um, resource limitations specifically ram and then we have uh, sccm prod 2 which is a sccm server a windows 2022 server this win 10 one is a full windows 10 install also gpu pass through where I was testing that out with like gaming and, and such. And then we have Portainer, which I've talked about in previous videos, and I have videos on how to set that up in, in Proxmox as well. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check that out. The Portainer is a very easy way to manage Docker containers, it makes the setup of them and spinning new ones up all very simple. So be sure to check out those videos. Next, we have SCCM Azure. This is a Windows 10 desktop that was set up with SCCM and then later joined to, to Azure AD. We'll talk about that in a minute. OMV is Open Media Vault, which currently the only thing I have on there is the NFS share that I use for Plex, which Plex is running in a Docker container and Portainer. I made a recent video about how to set up Plex and Portainer. Check that out. 
And then next we have ad-prod, which is my on-prem lab environment Active Directory server, also running Windows uh, Server 2022. And then we have sccm-prod, which is the first sccm instance that I set up. It's a primary site. Talk more about that in a second. And uh, then we have Azure device. This was a device that is Azure AD joined from the beginning. It is set up in Intune, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that's what I currently have running on my Proxmox server. So what I feel like is different from what you probably see in most videos about this setup is the Windows servers and the SCCM and the Active Directory. You don't see that too often and the videos that people make uh, regarding Proxmox, generally they got Linux VMs are running Portainer, for instance, or various other Linux-based um, services. And with mine, I have a lot of Windows stuff here, because like I said, in my professional career, this is a lot of what I work with. So this is kind of like my home lab to test out things that I would be doing for work. And most recently... That has been Azure AD and Intune related things. So if you're not familiar with any of the things that I just talked about, uh, you probably haven't worked in a corporate environment or maybe you haven't been in corporate IT, but generally if you work in a, a medium or large size corporation, Active Directory is probably what you're what you're using. And that's how you're going to manage the devices, your users. You're going to give your users different type of permissions, put them in groups. Uh, same thing with devices. You can do configurations like certain settings. You know, when someone logs into a Windows PC, they get a particular wallpaper. They get particular desktop icons, different types of stuff like that. That's what Active Directory allows you to do. And Azure Active Directory is the cloud-based identity service. So it doesn't really do all the things that on-premises Active Directory does, but the one thing that it does well is the cloud-based authentication. You can do conditional access, all sorts of stuff. And when it comes to the device configuration and certain settings for particular users, devices, etc., that's where um, Intune comes in at. And it's been called a few different things. I think right now they're still calling it Intune. So that's kind of what I've been trying to mimic in my environment at home because we still use both Active Directory on-premises for certain devices and certain things. It's kind of a transition uh, a long transition to move from um, or well to fully break away from the on-premises Active Directory and you may never break away from it and you may still have remnants of it for a long time uh, but uh, setting that up and setting up Azure and Intune so what we're looking at here is I'm using Ramina on my Nabara desktop to reach my Windows servers. And the one we're looking at now is the AD prod one, which is where the on-prem Active Directory is running at. And this is just uh, one policy that I have set up that's applied to devices. And we're not gonna get into all of the specifics about Azure Active Directory because you can make an entire video about that. Uh, but just know that this is here and this is why I use it is to test it out. And then we also have the SCCM, and, and these are, are spiritually the same, uh, but there's two different ones because I was testing something very specific related to Microsoft Connected Cache, uh, which allows your servers to cache um, apps uh, that come that are installed via Intune because you can deploy software through Intune to your Azure devices. And um, SCCM was what most people probably used before to do those kind of things. And if you're moving to the cloud-based stuff, you would be doing more Intune these days, but you can use both of them at the same time. Um, so I have this environment set up to test out imaging. Um, so the VMs, the Windows VMs that I had are imaged. So Windows is installed from SCCM and you do that through a network boot. Um, 
a pre-boot ex execution environment where you power on the computer and you hit F12 or whatever key it is to get your boot options and you boot from the network. And when you boot from the network, it reaches out to SCCM and it grabs the things it needs to take you into a pre-boot environment to install Windows. And it does this, it, it's mostly hands-off. Once you get it into the network boot, it's going to install Windows for you, configure, uh, configure it for you, and join it to Azure AD possibly, or the on-premises AD, or maybe not uh, Active Directory at all. Just depends on your scenario. So in my setup, I have both uh, both type scenarios where one would join it to the on-prem Active Directory and the other one joins it into Azure Active Directory, which is not the easiest process um, for various reasons. And I have some blog posts about that, about a hardware hash and things, but we're not going to get into all that because you're probably not interested in it. And if you are, leave a comment down below and I can make some videos about it specifically. But uh, that is what I'm using these for, is for that test environment. Um, and if we go take a look at uh, Azure Intune, which I have up here, you can see the two devices that I have. These are the two VMs. Um, and you can see one of them is managed by Intune, and one of them says that it's co-managed, and it says C Config Manager. Config Manager, SCCM, uh, same different terms, but talking about the same thing. Uh, so this is the one that's joined to the on-prem active directory, and this one is Azure AD only. But I do this uh, so I could test out different configurations. You can go in here and create configuration profiles. These are the things that are going to configure certain settings on the device, depending on what group the device is in and all sorts of other things. So it's really cool to test out. And I plan on my next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, careers in IT and a very, a very direct and easy path you could take to enter into corporate IT. I'm going to talk about some advice that I could give you there because I've been working in that, that field for quite some time. So I feel like I could provide you some beneficial advice if you're looking to enter into that field. Uh, so... If you'd like to see that video, stay tuned. It'll probably be the next video that I post. But if you have any specific questions, leave them down in the comments below, and hopefully I'll see those before I can make that video and I can answer some of your questions. Because I know these videos talking about Windows and Azure and all this stuff, it's probably not the typical stuff that's showing up in your feed. If you've watched my previous videos, you're probably more of a Linux person, and you can be both, you know, uh, my personal device is Linux, but, you know, Linux, there's not as many, in my my opinion, not as many careers that you're going to get into or they're not going to be as easy to get into for Linux. Most of what you run into in the corporate world is going to be Windows. Now, if you're a developer and you're going to the software development like web dev and stuff like that, you might see Linux more often, and but... You know, not to say we don't have Linux in our corporate environment, because we do. Um, it's just more commonly you're going to see the Windows-related services. And I have a lot of experience with them, and I can give you a lot of advice towards that. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. I apologize for that. So if you saw anything in this video that you would like to know more about, please leave a comment down below so I know what kind of videos you, you guys want to see, and I can make content that's tailored towards that. But that's really all I got for this video. Just wanted to run through my Proxmox setup so we're all on the same page and understand where I'm at in the Proxmox journey and, and everything. And yeah, that's it. Uh, so thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging through my rambling. I apologize for that. But I hope everybody has a great week. And thanks for watching. See you next time.